If you want to make 12 channels transmitter and receiver to control RC planes and RC cars using Arduino and NRF24L01, you should watch this video from start to finish. After watching this video, you will be able to control a BLDC motor of any rating, the rudder, the elevator, the ailerons. With these buttons, you can set the range of servos or connect more servos to control them. With these switches, you can set special aerobatic maneuvers like snap rolls and flips. I will also explain how to control a large DC motor 775 using a 320 ampere BEC and a high torque servo for the steering. You can use the same setup for RC cars, RC boats and all other radio control gadgets. Additionally, if you want to establish two-way communication between your RC plane or RC car and robots, you can watch my previous video. In that video, I discussed the technical specifications of the NRF24L01 transceiver module. It spin out how to use different baud rates, how to secure communication and many other things. I highly recommend you watch that video. The link is given in the description below. The transmitter and receiver are very similar in terms of connections. On both boats, I have added a 5V and 3 amps power supply. For smooth operation of the NRF24L01 transceiver modules, I have also added 3.3V power supplies. The connections for the NRF24L01 with the Arduino on both the transmitter and receiver sides are exactly the same. You can follow this circuit diagram for the 5V and 3 amps power supply. For the 3.3V power supply, use this circuit diagram. And for the connections of the two access analog joysticks, NRF24L01 interfacing with the Arduino, and buttons connections follow this circuit diagram. You can download the Gerber files of these boards from my Patreon page and send it to the next PCB for ordering high quality PCBs at affordable prices. To check for errors in your PCB design, you can use their free online or offline HQ DFM tool. Next PCB also provides component sourcing and PCB assembly services, which I discussed in my previous video on the hydroponic system version one. Get 30% off if you are a new customer who has never placed an order before. For the receiver side, start with these basic connections. Connect only the NRF24L01 module through the Arduino at first because first we need to program the transmitter and check if it works properly. If the transmitter works fine, then we will connect the motor and servos on the receiver side. Also, let me tell you, we will only program the transmitter side once. We will read all the components on the board and send them to the receiver side. Then on the receiver side, we will decide whether to use the joystick data, the buttons or all the 12 channels. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the transmitter and receiver side programs. This is the transmitter side program and this is the receiver side program. First, let's go ahead and install the required library. For this, simply copy the library name, then go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click on the manage libraries. Paste the library name in the search box. As you can see, I have already installed this library. This line creates an RF24 object named my radio with CE pin connected to pin 9 and CSN pin connected to pin 10. This is a 2D byte array to hold addresses. The address 0 is used here. To make it secure, you can use any combination of letters, numbers, and characters. The two axis analog joysticks are connected to the Arduino analog pins A1, A2, A3, and A4. All the six switches are connected to the Arduino pins 2, 3, 5, 4, 0, and 1. Next, I defined a structure named package to hold the joystick and switch values. Type diff is used to create an alias package for the struct package. This line creates an instance of package named data transmit. Then inside the setup function, we simply activate the serial communication at a baud rate of 115200. Sets the pin modes for the joystick and switch pins to input or input pull-up as needed. Then we initialize the radio module, sets the radio communication channel to 115. We disable the automatic acknowledgement feature of the radio module. Here are some advantages of doing this. Disabling automatic acknowledgement can slightly increase the speed of communication since the radio doesn't need to wait for an acknowledgement after sending a packet. For very simple or one-way communication setups, automatic acknowledgement might be unnecessary. Disabling it simplifies the communication process. 
In certain low power applications, avoiding the acknowledgement process can save a small amount of power as the radio doesn't need to listen for and process acknowledgement packets. So if you only need to send data in one direction and you are okay with occasional packet loss, then you should disable the automatic acknowledgement feature. Set the power level of the radio to maximum. Set the data rate to 250 kbps for maximum communication range. There are some other data rates which I have already covered in my previous video. Opens the wiring pipe with a specified address. Then inside the loop function we read the analog values from the joysticks and digital values from the switch pins and store these values in the corresponding variables. Finally we open the writing pipe and write the transmit structure to the radio module sending it wirelessly to the receiver. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the receiver side program. We are using the same libraries, the same CE and CSN pins on the receiver side. CE pin is connected to pin 9 and CSN pin is connected to pin 10. The same address and structure package. This time we create an instance of package named data receive. Even the code inside the setup function is exactly the same except these two instructions. First we open the reading pipe and then this second instruction puts the NRF24L01 module in listening mode. Then inside the loop function we check if there is data available to read. Continues reading as long as data is available. Reads the received data into the data received structure. Finally we print all the values on the serial monitor. I have already uploaded this program so let's go ahead and watch this in action. As you can see the joysticks are working and all the switches are working too. The control sticks are very responsive and RC planes we cannot afford any delay or lag. Anyway our transmitter is completely ready and now we can use it to control RC planes, RC cars and other RC gadgets and robots. This is our setup for the RC plane. On the receiver side I have connected one BLDC motor. The ESC signal wire is connected to the Arduino digital pen D3. The four servos are connected to the Arduino pins D5, D6, D7 and D8. If you don't know how to install these servos on an RC plane then you should watch my videos on RC plane designing. For the connections you can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the receiver side program. On the receiver side we will also need to add these two libraries servo.h for controlling servos and adafruit sleepydog.h for using a watchdog timer create servo objects. Define pins for the BLDC motor and servos. Package structure remains exactly the same. Inside the setup function we activate the serial communication for the debugging purposes. Attach each servo to its respective pin. Attach brushless motor to its pin. Set all servos to the neutral position 90 degrees. This set of instructions remains exactly the same. Finally set the watchdog timer. Inside the loop function if joystick 2 is moved backward, simply map these values to an angle range and set the elevator servo. If you want to move the servo arm to 0 degrees then replace 30 with 0. If joystick 2 is moved forward, map these values to an angle range and set the elevator servo. Again, if you want to move the servo arm to 180 degrees then simply replace 150 with 180. In the similar way, we set limits for all the other servos. If joystick 1's vertical value is in the upper half 510 to 1023, map these values to a motor speed range 1000 to 2000 microseconds and set the motor speed. So that's all about the program. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the RC plane control system in action.
You can use this setup in RC cars, RC boats and other RC vehicles. I've connected the 775 DC motor with a 320 ampere BEC. I've already made a detailed video about the 775 DC motor. In that video, I also explained some other drivers along with the 320 ampere motor driver. Anyway, I have connected a signal wire to the Arduino Digital Pen D3. With this powerful 25kg torque servo, we can easily control the steering of the car. This means that the servo can turn the wheels left or right. The high torque means it has a lot of power so it can handle heavy loads and provide precise control making the car steering smooth and responsive. Anyway, its signal wire is connected to the Arduino Digital Pen D5. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. This is the same program we used for the RC plane when we were controlling the BLDC motor. But this time we are controlling a Brush DC motor. So I just set the range from 1501 to 2000. Besides this, on the RC plane, we were controlling four servos. Whereas this time for the cars steering, we are using only one servo. So I modified the code and now I will be able to control the car steering using the second joystick. I've already uploaded this program, so let's watch the RC car wireless control system in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.